One of the main changes between the Stage 1 and Stage 2 rules is all individual sampling sites must be in compliance. Previously, utilities were able to average all of their sampling sites to determine compliance, known as the running annual average. But with the Stage 2 rule, each individual site must comply using what's called a Locational Running Annual Average, or LRAA. Regulated contaminants under both the Stage 1 and Stage 2 rules include the four trihalomethanes and five haloacetic acids, along with bromate for plants that disinfect with ozone and chlorite for plants that use chlorine dioxide. The maximum contaminant level, or MCL, for total trihalomethanes is 0.08 milligrams per liter, or 80 parts per billion. The MCL for all five haloacetic acids is 0.06 milligrams per liter, or 60 parts per billion. Plants that use ozone as a disinfectant have to be concerned with the formation of bromate, which occurs when bromide in the source water reacts with ozone. The maximum contaminant level for bromate is 0.01 milligrams per liter, or 10 parts per billion. Chlorite is a byproduct of chlorine dioxide and occurs when the disinfectant breaks down. The MCL for chlorite is one milligram per liter, or one part per million. The stage one and stage two disinfectants and disinfection byproducts rules also set a maximum residual disinfection level, or MRDL, for chlorine, chloramines, and chlorine dioxide. For both chlorine and chloramines, the maximum residual is 4 milligrams per liter. For chlorine dioxide, 0.8 milligrams per liter, or 800 parts per billion. It's important for water utilities to comply with these regulations to protect public health. So what should water utilities do to limit their disinfection byproducts and make sure they're in compliance? DBP control strategies can be divided into three categories. Precursor removal, modification of treatment and disinfection practices, and removal of DBPs after formation.